Yes, it's finally here. The course you've all been waiting for. The Fast Track, your spiritual and conscious journey online course. There's nothing like it on the internet right now. So make sure you subscribe. It answers all the questions that, you know, you've been asking us through the Ask Us Anything series. Plus more. It gives you so much interactivity. You can ask us questions online. So yeah, make sure that you subscribe, register and start to do the online course. And um, yeah, we'll be there to support you all the way. Spread the word. Right, so we're just going to answer questions because you know what it is? We've put out so much videos mm. and every video still has people asking questions. Yeah. So we thought, you know, let's just get all the, the top three, um, accumulate all the questions and address those for you. So that's what we're doing today, yeah? Yeah. yeah? All right, cool. Let's do it. So basically, this science is not just for melanated skin only. It's for all upon this planet. Yeah, I'm glad you used the word science. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you're dealing with science, science deals with actual facts. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's what Wusabat yeah. deals with. Wusabat deals with facts. It doesn't matter your colour, whether you're green, yellow, purple, black or white, as they say, which or doesn't really exist. Or species. Or species, <laughs> you know. So um, if you can accept the facts mm. and deal with science, then yes, Wu Sabat is for everyone. Mm -hmm. Science has no colour. There you go. Who are the original Americans? The original Americans. This is another thing. Mm. The, the word original, and we have to um, specify that English actually throws you off yeah. a lot with words like original, because like, what does that mean? How far back are you going? Um, but the, the indigenous people of Africa are going to be the same people mm. that are in America. So everyone mixed with Africa or Africans to produce the, the sub races and the different races. So the original will be the indigenous African people who were known as the newborns. Yep. Yeah. But that's the word newborns is where the word new being came from. Mm. And those beings literally existed there and they all tie back into the original Patarites of what people call Egypt or ancient Egypt. So that's who they are. So do you know about the faceless beings that moves like ants and communicate telepathically? <laughs> Again, this is, this is where we, we always mm. say like, ask questions like clearly like where's the reference from where are you getting that yeah. from is that just something on the internet is it from a book but as we've already explained there are many hybrids mm. yeah <clears throat> extraterrestrials are constantly kidnapping other extraterrestrials creating all types of beings so it's possible but without having a, a, a like a reference to what where this is coming from it's hard to answer the question could be talking about incubus and succubus you're There's really, just so yeah, many beings. I mean, yeah. it's it's endless the amount of different hybrids and beings mm. that you know. Most people are only dealing with the the humanoid beings, mm. but you got grasshoppers, you got mantis, mantis beings, yeah. you got predators, you got all types of beings that are mixing and constantly, you know, um, creating new hybrids. Mm. So, yeah. What do you know about sleep paralysis or what people call demons or witches riding your back? Again, we've covered this question in mm. terms of sleep paralysis many, many times. Um, that deals with when you're kind of like coming out of your body. Yeah, so you've got your, you've got your different parts of you. Um, you've got your physical body, you've got your spiritual body, you've got your mental body, the, you know, the plasmatic you, the etheric you. And normally is when there's a disconnect between the physical you and one of your other, you know, spiritual beings. So um, sleep paralysis is when, you hear the word, you're asleep, but you're paralysed. Paralysed, yep. So but you're asleep, you're, you're supposed to be asleep, but you're awake and you can't move mm. because your, you know, your other essence that connects you with the physical body is not there at that moment. So a lot of people will travel when they go to what they call sleep. Um, and travel to different realms, come outside their bodies. There are people who they say they've had a near-death experience or they might be in an operating room in a hospital and their body comes out, um, sorry, their spiritual being mm. comes out and they're actually watching their body being operated on. 
but the body's just chill. Um, and sometimes you do it when you go to sleep and then you wake up before you fuse back together. Mm. And that's where that moment before, you know, you come back together as one, um, it's happened to me. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> you're, it happens to you're just scared <laughs> because you're like, what's going on? I'm awake, but I can't move. Yeah. And then you, some people f get frightened, but you have to just relax, breathe, mm. and then after a while you will come back together. Why isn't Africa using its God power to be the country it is meant to be? It is. Africa is the most powerful country right now. Um, obviously, remember that the West, they push and promote certain aspects, mm. which is to make it look like it's poor, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, all the riches from the West are from Africa. Yeah. You know, the gold, the platinum, the oil, cobalt, um, Uranium. diamonds, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> silver, name gold, it. Yeah. It's all from Africa. So... What well, the problem is that Africa is on the rise, it's mm. quite young and it's organising itself because of the dis dissension and confusion amongst the people with a lot of times puppet leaders from the West mm. or they install leaders that they still control. But Africa now, that's why the Chinese, the Russians, everybody's going to Africa because Africa is the next frontier. So. It's a misconception. Mm. Um, I don't know if you want to yeah, yeah. add anything to that. But. Yeah, basically, if they left us in our own homeland, who would be the richest? The, the planet won't, can't survive without African mineral or natural resources. Yeah. Is God a man or a woman or both? Is God the original creator of all beings? That sounds like a religious person. Mm. Um, when you're in a religious state of mind, you, first of all, you have to think who or what is God. Who are you talking about? Because, yes, God is man. Yes, God is woman. Um, but when you say the original creators, um, that's where it kind of gets a bit, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It gets, like, confusing mm. because you are God, yeah, male or female. Obviously, the male comes from the female. So the woman would be, or the female would be the original God. Um, but when you start saying creator, you're going into how far back are we talking? You know, mm. because the planet didn't have a, a, the type of life forms that are, are on it now, originally. So you're going back to our planet, to our galaxy, to our solar system, to our universe, because there are others, you see. So sometimes that question of who is the first creator, it depends how far back you're going. Certainly, if you're talking about on the planet, yeah, it will be the original Patarites who evolved from the waters onto land. And then those will be the females because you're dealing with the, the, the females first. The females, females um, were speaking before the males, you know, and uh, the male comes from the female. So, yeah. Yeah. Even if you're looking at it on a scientific, when you're dealing with black like, chromosomes, mm female have the XX and then the male have an XY, so the Y would be a deformity of the X, so... Yeah. That's just showing you... But even then, when you touched on the X, the chromosomes, you can find out that there are different beings with different chromosomes. Mm. So you've got, like, hermaphrodite, hemophrodites with XY, XYX, X, yeah. or YXY, you know, so, yeah. Who is the creator of everything? The universe? All of it? <laughs> this is what I'm saying. It's like, English... Sometimes you just have to yeah. dissect words because when you say everything, mm. we've already broken down many times that what are you calling a thing? Mm. Because things are quantifiable. Things have a sum, a weight. Um, so when you say everything, um, is that what? The planet, the solar system, the galaxy, the universe, because all those are things. Um, Wu Sabat teaches you that you know, we predate what people are calling things, mm. people, places and the things. Because yeah. we go back to being, you know, gases or nine ether, the original etheric beings, <clears throat> which is all gases, all things combined, where all conscious and conscience gases combined, that's ether. And that's where we evolved from. And that's a whole different makeup because it's not dealing with your physical form you know that ether 
comes down into physical form or slows down in terms of vibration to become things. What happened to the dinosaurs? The dinosaurs were extinct by meteorite showers um, <coughs> at different times. You know, you have one that was um, 17 million 250,000 years ago that wiped out the dinosaurs. Some of this stuff, you can just Google and go and do some research, mm. you know, and find out information that is readily available to everyone. The planet, certain parts of the planet were destroyed many, many, many times. And that was one of them. Um, and there was another one, another meteorite shower as well. So it depends, you know, how far back you're going. But yeah, they were wiped out by meteorite showers. You've got the bulls in South America, so those are remnants of how the Anunnaki's or the extraterrestrials was used to destroy the dinosaurs. Mm. Prove Jesus had wives using God's word, not your own. Again, this is where we're saying that when you say God's word, most people mm. are reading the Bible in English, mm, yeah. so they're, and they're not aware of the customs and traditions. Mm. So, for example, he would be following Judaic law, right? And in Judaic law, if you don't know, you'll have to read in the Hebrew and go into, depending on which book we're talking about, New Testament is going to be the Greek and the you know, Latin. The Hebrew is going to be the Old Testament. So in the customs and the traditions, a woman, <coughs> only a woman that is married to you can do certain things mm. like wash your feet, oil your feet. Um, if you read that story and read other accounts by other beings like Barnabas, okay, who was actually the half-brother of Jesus, if you read the, the books by Mary, you know, there are many mm. books that are left outside of the Bible where the book of Enoch, there are many books that have been found that were left outside the Bible. So when you say use God's words, I don't know which scripture you're referring to because there's so many and... Even the Bible itself is a plagiarized copy from mm. the Anunnaki stories. But if you follow Judaic law and look at what a woman can do to a man, it's only certain things that can be done if you're married to that mm. man. And that's what, that's what Mary Magdalene was doing. Not only that, there are other people, the Da Vinci Code, the movie, many people have you know, put out information to prove that Jesus was married. I think even the, the magazine Nexus had, had uh, something about yeah. Jesus having children and stuff like that. So, yeah. The information yeah. is that people just have to do their research. Is the Earth flat? Is there any real pictures of the real Earth from space? Are we in some sort of prison? We don't subscribe that the Earth yeah. is flat. Um, there's so much information out there in terms of satellite pictures and even though the Earth, um, flat Earth, people don't subscribe to those images. Um, remember, we are student teachers of Parna Bab Janun and the, the master teacher, mm. Dr. Malachi Z. York. He has never taught us yeah. that the earth is flat. And yes, some things we just have to wait for further information, but we go by what we have been taught. Mm. And we've never been taught that the earth is flat in all the years and all the doctrines that he has taught us. Um, the other question, the second part of that was... Um, are we in some sort of prison? Yeah, that was the mm. one. Are we in some sort of prison? Yes, we are, because um, even if you read and follow the Bible, it said that um, the devil was cast down to earth with his angels. Angel, yeah. yeah, and um, you can't just get off and leave this planet unless you cross over first. So you are, the earth is like, you're quarantined. It's like... Mm. It's like you know when you have antivirus on your computer and it finds viruses and it puts it into a, a particular location and it quarantines it, that's what Earth is like. It's a, it is like a prison where you have to learn to elevate your spiritual being so that when you leave here, you can be allowed to, to leave and not have to come back. Um, until you learn those lessons, you're going to keep coming back and reliving these lives until you kind of like, yeah eradicate some of the behaviours that is not allowed in heaven, if you want to use that term. What did the Master Chief say? 25 to 25,000 times reincarnate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 24 to 24,000 times. Mm. And um, that just gives you the opportunity to, to fix yourself yeah. and... Um, correct yourself. Correct yeah. yourself, <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
What's your opinion about the Bible be the slave book? Well, it's not really our opinion. Mm. It's, it's a fact because you didn't speak English, you didn't have a religion in Africa until, you know, slavery came mm. along in the way that you have it today. Um, <coughs> so, yes, it is a slave book because it was really originally to help the slaves of the Anunnaki, mm. known as the Lulu Amidu. It was meant to keep them in shape and keep them in order. Um, and then in time, you know, Enki um, tricked us, well, en en Enlil and Enki, the brothers, um, sons of Anu, when they were warring and weren't getting the, um, the slaves to do the work, it, eventually Enki mm. um, sided with, with what, who they Tam called Zuen. Mm. And then, yeah, right, so then it went on to Tammuz being assigned to, mm. to the workers. So it is a, a Sumerian doctrine, and um, yes, it, is, it was a book to keep them in control, but then it got, the spell got cast on, um, on us, or the, or the Adamites, shall I say, and then the Adamites put it on people today. So a lot of people today are just like... But don't forget that the, the, um, the Quran as well is also enslaved us in, in mentally, and, yeah, so... Mm, that's a good point, <laughs> yeah, because... The Quran comes from the Bible, yeah. and uh, you know the Bible, the New Testament comes from the Old Testament, and it, and it's funny what you just said because in Islam, when you take your shahada, mm. um, one of the names that you get is Abdullah, which literally translates as slave of Allah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, they're both the monotheistic religions are yeah slave or, books or the three frogs. Yeah, yeah. Do you believe in taking tattoos? Taking tattoos. Taking tattoos. I think that I mean like. Putting on tattoos. Okay. <laughs> um, again, we, we mm. like to deal with facts and not belief. Yeah. Um, the original way is is from henna. Mm. Henna is natural, and it doesn't affect you. Whereas tattoos, um, the, if you understand how it's done, it's actually metals. Met yeah. It's made from metals, and this is, these metals can go into your body, and um, so they can become poisonous. And they go into your pores because your pores are open. Mm. So yeah, we don't we don't really promote tattoos, but like with anything, we're not judgmental and we're not like if you've already got tattoos, you can try to get them removed. Um, however, you know it was originally because people will say in ancient Egypt and certain places they saw people with you know things mm. marked on their bodies, but it's done naturally through things like henna and so on. So yeah, no, we don't. We don't push tattoos. I wonder where they stand on homosexuality. Stay out of people's bedrooms. <laughs> well, the master teacher teaches us that, yeah, people's sexual preferences are their own and that we don't get involved with people's mm. personal business. So if you're thinking we're not homophobic, if that's what you're asking, we don't gay bash, mm. as that, that's a term people use to mm. you know, abuse and insult people. Um, we just deal with... Our culture, which is we, you know, we, we promote um, male-female relationships and for the purposes of procreating an offspring, you know. So, but yeah, everyone's sexual preference is their own. So, I love my XX chromosomes. That's, that's <laughs> it. It, it made that statement clear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's your take on masturbate? Wow, these questions. Mm. What is our take? Um, Again, kind of mm. tie into the question we just answered. The purpose of <clears throat> ejaculation really is for procreation. Mm. So, you know, it's not, a, we don't advocate it, but again, we stay out of people's bedrooms. Yeah. So <laughs> whatever you do in your bedroom, that's, that's your business. But on a, on a spiritual level, in terms of, you know, the um, energies that you're exerting, um, it's better to retain. Mm -hmm. There's different types of ejaculations as well. That's another thing. So there's internal ejaculation, which mm -hmm. you can train yourself not to have to um, lose energy in that way. But um, yeah, we, we basically, if you're using the sexual act for procreation, then there would be no need for, for masturbation and it's unnatural as well. I, well, let me, let me rephrase mm -hmm. that. It's, it's like... What's the, is it just for desire? Is it just for self-pleasure? Self-pleasure. Yeah. So this is where 
um, yeah, you kind of have to weigh it up. But again, we stay out of your bedrooms. Yeah. <laughs> if whites are mixed with canine genetics, does this mean they need to eat meat to be healthy? Also, what makes blood or the killing of animals inferior to the killing of plants? Because you're mixed doesn't mean that you have to eat meat and be um, have them taking blood. Um, but however, like health, this is what I'm saying, like there's so much research and so much information, the health benefits of not eating meat. So it doesn't matter who you are, like, because if you start to look at how meats are actually brought onto the market today, mm. they put a lot of... Um, Steroids. Yeah, a mm. lot, lot of things in the meat. And the, the meat ends up producing a lot of uric acid in the body. Um, that uric acid can um, cause arthritis and all kind of ailments. Um, your body is not designed to digest mm. meat. We didn't originally have canine teeth. Mm -hmm. If you look at you know the way your digestive system works, it's not really designed for eating meat. So the health benefits for not eating flesh in general are so much, much better. Um, but yeah, in terms of, what was the second part? I don't remember the question. Killing plants. Oh it? yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, that's a good question. However, you're from the earth and you're naturally um, vegetarian by nature or, or vegan to be more precise. Um, and it does say plants are for food in mm. the Bible. So you've got to eat something. And I think like the point is that, yeah, I take, I mean, it's kind of a good question. Now, what would you rather do? Kill an animal or take a, a apple from a tree which ones and, and feed yourself give yourself nutrition which one mm. is more which one works better you've actually triggered a question <laughs> uh, a part of the answer oh, because okay. um yeah you have to know that an apple for example its ultimate goal is mm. to get to a point where its purpose mm. is to provide you with nutrition mm -hmm. so if it's eaten at its optimal level then it's fulfilled its destiny because yeah. that's what it was designed yeah. for as, as opposed to leaving it to rot and fall mm. on the ground which is not what it was designed yeah. for so what you just said there reminded me that yes it's its purpose is to actually give you nourishment and nutrition mm. like other plants so yeah that's the actual job whereas an animal it's got its own life and purpose yeah. and then you're there spilling its blood <laughs> to eat when that's not what it was designed for so I guess I'm screwed. I'm a white woman. You're not a white mm. woman, actually. There's no such thing as a white person <laughs> or a black person. Um, you know, look at the colours white and see what, what you look like. Um, saying that to say, and what do you, what do you mean by screwed as well? Mm. Um, yeah, we, we, we forget that it's all about your DNA, not about your colour of your skin. And this is one of the things that you know, people, and I don't understand what you mean by screwed because mm. we have mentioned many times that Wu Sabat is for everyone. Um, and it's up to you how much you elevate. And the Bible does that where it makes people feel like, well, I'm, I'm guilty, I've already done it, mm. so um, there's no hope <laughs> for me. So let me just continue to, you know, go down that path. And that's wrong because you can always decide to start making changes. Mm, change your diet. Yeah. yeah. Change tomorrow. Mm. Change today. Yeah. So you're not screwed. Mm. <laughs> Can a white person be a New Orbean? Let's say they were black in past lives, but are now incarnated as a white person. Again, it kind of touches on the same. <laughs> like, um, yeah, anybody can be a New Orbean. Um, but even that, they were black in past lives. Mm. I mean, like, how do you know this? Yeah. <laughs> How can you prove that? Um, but yeah, it's about your DNA. It's about the DNA. It's not about the colour of your skin. Uh, Nawap was universal knowledge. So were those extraterrestrials or angels that appear to people in scripture, or are they one and the same? One and the same. Um, again, which scripture are we talking mm. about? Uh, we're talking about the Bible, Quran, and so on. Yes, the... The angels, this is what we're explaining, that angels are not the way you've been taught about mm. angels. They're not 
like men or cherubs or little babies with wings. You know, they're they are actual entities, beings, um, and there are different types that appear throughout times to different people, prophets, etc. Yeah, they are one and the same. These angels are what people are calling gods in the Bible, and they're extraterrestrials. Yeah. 2024 extraterrestrial that's the that's the that's modern new, day the modern new, day yeah in name for <laughs> angels and gods what is the oldest religion known to man Hindu, hinduism right mm. but the thing is um religion is is made mm. like there was a time where there was no religion so yeah you could say hinduism um and that came by hindus who were worshiping us mm. and again even when you say hinduism hinduism is not a religion this is another mm. misconception. It, it's it's really dealing with people, mm. yeah. And, yeah, you have to know who these people <coughs> were or are. It's, you can ask people that you know about that know about Hinduism. They will tell you it's not religion, but people make cultures mm. and ways of life into religion. I want to know what's his feeling about weaves and hair pieces, perms and things like that for black women hair. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Whoever asked him the question, they said his feeling. I don't know if that's what your feeling, my feeling, or the master. Yeah, feeling. yeah. Um, all right, let's answer the question. You're you're tricked into thinking a perm is permanent. Mm. It's not. That's that's what the word perm means. It's not permanent. And you know, it all depends on why. Um, you know, what's about is very flexible. There's a direct question answer, which is. We like to be natural mm. and, and keep everything natural. Yeah. However, circumstances and situations where maybe you have to do it for work or something, we're not judgmental because the master says that it, we have a book called The Family Guide. And he says, wear your hair in the best way that you think um, reflects you. Mm. However, um, keep it short. And the reason why you see some of our sisters wear their hair short because he was trying to get you from that straight six mm. E for hair mentality yeah. where, you, you know, beauty was portrayed in the media as being long, straight six E for hair. And unfortunately, some of the men, the brothers, they like that. So, um, you know, females try a lot of the times to adorn themselves, um, you know, to be attractive to the opposite sex. So that's why they wear, but yeah, we, we don't really promote weaves and fake stuff as much as possible. So keep it natural. We prefer you that way, you know, natural. Yeah. How do we reach our ancestors to be guided over to our proper home when we die? You're mm. You already are your ancestors. This is another thing. You're connected <laughs> to them by DNA, mm. by blood, yeah, yeah. by mentally you know you're, you're connected to them um, the problem comes when you're given a kind of a misdirection mm. to worship other than kind follow you know religions and it takes you away from connecting with yourself and then to your bloodline and to your ancestors so by Wu Sabat is what brings you close to your ancestors because you start to understand that you are them and they are you and the, the things you do every day, the chance, um, you know, constantly communicating with them. Which God do you guys worship? <laughs> we, we don't, we, we worship. don't worship. <laughs> this is, this is, um, <laughs> this is where we ask the question, why do you need to mm. worship? Why does God need to be worshipped? Why does he need anything? <laughs> why does he need anything? You know? um, and when you understand that you are God or mm. the goddess, you have to ask yourself, do you worship yourself? And that word comes from the worship mm. of the Meldekians, yeah. which goes back into a whole long story of the, the fights and conflicts between different extraterrestrials. Um, we do recognize and give reverence to our ancestors mm -hmm. and to nature. Um, and as animists, we recognize that you know, without the sun, for example, there's no life. So we used to raise our hands mm. and give reverence to the sun because it provided crops and food and stuff. Um, we obviously know that our bloodline, our ancestors, they don't die, they cross mm. over and they're on the other side and they can help us from the other side. So we communicate with them. 
But no, we do not worship anyone or anything but self and kind. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with giving respect and you know adoration to, to your ancestors. Nothing wrong with that. Every other race does it, but it seems like when we do it, it's a problem. Can somebody please spell out the original language that they are talking about? I want to find some more information on the internet about it. Okay, um, the original language has many names mm. and titles depending on where you're doing your research from. So we'll give you a few names and then you can research that. So Nuapik, N-U-W-A-U-P-I-C. Um, you can also look up um, Sabaic, that's S-E-B-A-I-C. And in our own language, we call it Misbatia, that's M-I-S-B-A-T-I-Y-A. Um, but like we keep explaining, there are scripts with any language. Mm. You have scripts um, like the heretic, which would be the script in ancient Egypt. Then you had the hieroglyphics. Um, and in ancient Sumer, you have the cuneiform. Mm. And these are the wedge you know, shaped mm. scripts. These are all scripts of the same language. It's just that you would have to research and go back into like Napata, mm. Moreau. Moreau, yeah, and um, you know, look at look at how languages have evolved. Even the Ethiopian script, that's part of the script for Misbatia or Nuapik. The Nuapik it can also be spelt with a B or a P. You see, so and the P and the B in languages are interchangeable. Mm. So that's why some people say Nuabian, some will say Nuapian. Same people. Um, and yeah, if you go into ancient Egypt, you will find the uh, hieroglyphics on the walls. Um, we have a book called Parla Hedge, um, the language, uh, the language Parla Hedge, Shalel Wakut, that means the language mm -hmm. of time, mm -hmm. that actually shows you the evolution of our language. Yeah, so you can get hold of that. There's a documentary on um, YouTube um, in search of Queen of Sheba, mm. where they show you the Sabaic script on there as well. Mm. And some people, will, when they search or research um, Sabians, they go to the Yemen or the, mm. the kind of modern people that are calling themselves Sabians. But the word Saba, Seba, Sheba, that's what my brother's mm. referring to, it goes back to what they call the Queen of Sheba, but her real name is Ma'ad Kha yeah. And she's the one that, remember I said the women spoke first. So, you know, this is where um, Sabaic or Sabatic comes from. How can I become a student? Oh, wow. The first thing is sign up to OSM Vision mm -hmm. <laughs> and watch all the videos. That uh, There's a lot of information. Um, we've answered so many questions. Study that. Um, join us. It depends where you are in the world. If you're in the UK, go to nashat.co.uk, join us. Um, we have classes every single week for free and worldwide as well. We're online, we're on Clubhouse, um, YouTube, Facebook, all the social yeah. media platforms. Just search Nuwapu, Sabaic, Nuwapians. Um, yeah, you're going to find somebody teaching mm. class and teaching some information. Um, and then, yeah, once you become a part of the family, you get to learn a lot more other things that go on in terms of the orders and you know the other aspects of our culture. If extraterrestrials created the human race on Earth to help build and get gold, then why, on the other hand, is it said that we were sent here to basically learn lessons, karmic lessons, or how to figure out who we are to get to a higher level so we can then leave this Earth prison? If we were made to work in this atmosphere, then we were made to be our creator's workers, slaves. Either our creators left us here, or they are still with us. If they left us here after they got what they wanted, then why would we praise them? If they are here, and they allow all that happens here, good or bad, what is the reason? Why would they let other extraterrestrials come and make a hybrid of the first human creation? Are we all just being used by these gods? That question is long. Um... Sounds like you need to come to class. <laughs>
because there's so many different questions you ask. There's a lot of it's like you're asking the question and answering it yourself because you're saying mm. if this, if that, if this, if that. Um, we're gonna have to probably re, like go through them slowly because there's a lot of yeah, let's points. Put, let's break um, it down. And you say <laughs> if extraterrestrials, first of all, mm. which extraterrestrials are we talking about? That's what I was thinking. And, and what what situation are we talking about? Mm. It sounds like you're talking about Enlil and Enki. That's what I was, yeah. <laughs> and the Anunnaki <laughs> story, yeah. as in them being made, you know, slaves and workers. Um, yeah, can you just kind of like read it and we'll tell you when to stop and then you mm. read the next bit because there's a lot. If extraterrestrials created the human race on Earth to help build and get gold, then why, on the other hand, is it said that we were sent here to basically learn lessons, karmic lessons? Yeah. Right. Yeah, stop there. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the, the Anunnaki or the Ano Ano um, Anakim, they create the Adamites to mine the gold. Mm. Yeah. So it's 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 like there was there were many projects mm. taking place, and that's just one of the projects, yeah. and they were mining gold but that doesn't apply to everybody yeah. and every race on the planet this is why we have to like say what are we talking mm. about what stories which extraterrestrials when and so on that next part or how to figure out who we are to get to a higher level so we can then leave this earth prison yeah that part is wool sabat that's yeah. what wool sabat <laughs> is here to do is to get you to study to learn to know who you are and to know what you need to do so you don't have to come back and to leave here if we were made to work in this atmosphere, then we were made to be our creator's workers, slaves. Yeah, we already covered that. That's the Anunnaki yeah. story you're talking Adamites, about. Yeah. Adamites, yeah. Either our creators left us here, or they are still with us. Well, who's your creator? This is what I'm saying. It's like your mother and father are your creators. Mm. But, you know, because you've been given this religious concept of God created you, but as we say, which God? And that, that whole story you're talking about, it's... The Bible doesn't apply to everyone. The Quran doesn't apply to everyone. Um, so you're talking about the Anunnaki stories and uh, you know the Sumerians. That's what that was about. And it ties into a book that a master teacher wrote, Why No Help From Above. Mm. Actual, is it Master Secrets? Yeah, Master Secrets. If they left us here after they got what they wanted, then why would we praise them? This is what I'm saying. Yeah. Like they. They let they didn't leave us here. Like we're not. Who's the us? You know, we we that are here are to learn because people's um, genet genetics or genealogy are from different places. Mm. So different races relate to different extraterrestrials, mm. and these extraterrestrials, some of them come back to help their offspring to elevate and teach them, so they can leave it or even take them with them. Um, unfortunately, sometimes when these teachers come along, um, they turn them into gods and start to worship them and don't actually follow the instructions. And like, you know, Joseph Smith for the Mormons, for mm. example, he came and you can go through all the different people that have come, even including Jesus. They end up getting crucified because they're teaching you how to be God, not to worship God because mm. you are God, but they're trying to elevate you so that you don't have to come back, basically. Yeah. But some of the beings or beings that you call gods are actually coming back for food. Mm. Yeah, again, that's what I'm saying, the purpose <laughs> you're here for. Some of you are bred as farm animals, mm. just like you breed chickens Chicken, and goats yeah. and cows to eat them. They're doing the same. Livestock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If they are here and they allow all that happens here, good or bad, what is the reason? There's no, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. Good or bad is subjective. Like people say something is bad because it affects them negatively. Mm. But to someone else, that's a good thing. So the extraterrestrials that, they don't look at it like a bad thing. Like, do you look at it as a bad thing when you breed chickens to eat them? Because you're saying you're nourishing and mm. feeding yourself. They're looking at it like, we need food. Yeah. And That's it. we like your type of meat. And we're going to breed you to eat you just the same way. And now, because it's you as a human, you say, oh, it's terrible. It's so bad. But then you <laughs> don't think the same when you're doing it to the chickens or to the goats or to the Cow. cows or the other animals. People give them names and everything. Yeah. yeah? But menu... 
<laughs> man you, yeah? yeah? Man is going to be on the menu. So we shouldn't feel... Well, we're, we're all right, but... Yeah. <laughs> You're sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> we put ourselves on the menu when we do silly things and do the things that season us yeah. for their taste. They'll be on the menu. Yeah. Right, go on, next question. <laughs> Why would they let other extraterrestrials come and make a hybrid of the first human creation? Are we all just being used by these gods? Yeah, they're different types of mm. um, extraterrestrials and it's not let them, they just, they, they just like, um, there are no rules, it's just like, well, there are galactic rules. Galactical rule, laws, laws, yeah. But yeah, I'm saying like, in terms of, um, why would they allow, no one is allowing them, it's like, okay, no, actually, you got, you got different stages, mm. isn't it? You got the Parnatharu who are like the overseers yeah. and they try to keep order. And there are certain laws, like certain extraterrestrials are not, not allowed to come here, mm. but they still come here. Yeah. Just like immigration, mm. you know, you hear about the boats. Mm. <laughs> um, people still come through and, some, and do things that they're not allowed to do. Then you have the, the beings that have to keep order and they try to put things in. You know, in order. Mm. So, yeah, it's a bit of chaos because you've got a lot of conflicts going on between different species and different extraterrestrials who all have different agendas and, you know, objectives. Yeah. Just like you have rules and regulations here, but man still break them. Same thing up there. You have galactical laws, but beings still break them. Mm. How do we protect ourselves from the alien feast? By keeping yourself off the menu. <laughs> because... Um, they like certain types of meat. Mm. They like fear. The people that die when they're afraid, the adrenaline, adrenaline yeah. rushes and they like that. It gives it a particular flavor for them. They like people that drink alcohol. They like, you know, if you're eating certain things, bad foods, um, your vibration mm. basically is lower and they like certain, you know, taste um, we actually have a scroll that goes into more details um on this i'm trying to remember the name of it um you've got it's in the proof um, yeah the proof psalms of yanun yeah um but yeah it's, it's really the food for the gods doctrine yeah um which if you read the book of leviticus for example all throughout that book in the bible it's talking about you know these flesh-eating, bloodthirsty extraterrestrials. God of light and fire as well. Yeah, that's, that's right. definitely one good score. God of light and fire. Um, yeah, what was the... Is there any more of that question? How do we protect ourselves from the alien feast? Yeah, that's what we're about to say to do. Yeah. Because it's a vibration, it's a frequency, mm. it's a protection. Um, the tones, if you learn the language, that's how you protect yourself by practicing Wu Sabat um, and just basically raising your consciousness and your vibration. How to increase your frequency? Oh, like, <laughs> just tied into the same. <laughs> you increase your frequency by more spiritual practices, mm -hmm. by showing and vibrating with love, which we call Ashuk, unconditional um, love, meditating, fasting, um, just anything that raises your vibration. Um, doing things to help humanity, mm. teaching the doctrine, learning the language, because all of these things help you to raise your consciousness and your vibration. Be around like-minded people, mm -hmm. all those help. If your knowledge is so ancient and advanced, why nobody else encountered this knowledge down through history, and where was the civilization that left no trace of its existence, sounds like a cult somebody invented. That question makes no sense because mm -hmm. we've just gone through all the different <laughs> cultures that have left, you know, so ancient Egypt, Zoo, the Zoastics, mm. the Mayans, the Dogons, the Chinese, the Hindus. Hindus yep. There's so many cultures that predate the Bible. The Bible is like 6,000 years old, the, you know, the Abrahamic <laughs> religion. So when you say no one's left, would you think the pyramids are <laughs> <You know, laughs> all of these things that... Stone Edge, <laughs> um, there's so many things that have been left behind. Mm. The Sumerian texts, there's so many things that people have left behind. So um, I don't know why you're saying they haven't left anything. And the fact of saying the word cult, 
again, this is another term that the media and religion mm -hmm. has made into a bad thing. You have to get this English words, because English puts the spell on you, mm. right? When you say cult, you're really saying culture. You have to add the rest of the word, yep. because it's a root <laughs> word, culture. And many people that don't have cultures, like the ones we've just mentioned, they would say, if you're doing anything that's outside of what they call the status quo, then you're a cult. Meaning if you have your own way of life, then you're labelled mm. you're labelled a cult. Um, but most cultures have a dress code, they have a language, they have foods, they have dances, you know, they have things that they do as part of their culture. What was the other part of that question? If your knowledge is so ancient and advanced, why nobody else encountered this knowledge down through history, and where was the civilization that left no trace of its existence? Sounds like a cult somebody invented. Right, we covered that. Yeah, mm. you can go to ancient Egypt and Everybody mm. went to Egypt to, mm. be, to be taught and to learn. Yeah, so look, and the Sumeria, there's so much. Go ahead. Why are you always in gold and black color? I need answers on that, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we are in gold and black. Um, all right, so black is not a color. Mm. It's a supreme state, state yeah. yeah? Because before there was light, there was dark mm. because God said, let there be, be light. light. Yep. So before he said that, he was in a state of darkness. All colors combined give you black. Mm. Black mm. is a state, a, a, a balancement, a state of mind. Um, perfection. Perfection. Su yeah. Supreme balancement. And yeah. colors affect you. Mm. And so if you don't know what color to wear, black will be the best color to wear because it's the one that combines all the colors. In the religious world and in kind of like Western traditions, they make black bad by telling you to wear black to funerals. Mm. And they look at funerals as a bad thing because mm. it's like, to the, them is the yeah. end. Whereas we know that there is no end. And so black is, it's not a bad color. It's not a bad thing. But because of the connotations, you know, blackboard, blacklisted, black market, black, yeah, black everything, sheep, black sheep, black, everything black that's male. made, yeah, the <laughs> actors wear, the good actors wear white, <laughs> the bad ones wear black, Dracula wears black. Yeah. It's all about, you know, making you feel inferior because the white, everything white, you wear white to weddings, you wear white. To, you know, angels, ch church, christening. <laughs> yeah, so it's angels always come wearing white. That's actually a good point. Why do angels always wear clothes? Mm. When people see angels or in the Bible, they're always wearing white robes. So the point is, who's making the clothes in heaven? They've got a tailor up, up in heaven, man. But f before the tailor, you need you actually need cotton, don't you? It's spiritual, spiritual yeah. sheep ups. Up in heaven. Now you need you need to grow the cotton to make the clothes, and someone needs a tailor, and um, but they all wear the same size, isn't it? Crazy. <laughs> we're yeah. joking. We're joking. Okay, we're not joking, but we're digressing. Yeah. Um, but there was a second part to the question. Um, oh, gold. The gold. Mm. Gold is royalty. Mm. It, it, you know, it, it, it symbolizes royalty, and we have gold in our blood, and it's known as palm set. And that's the elixir of life, that, that gold that everybody is after and it's valuable. So black and gold are two colours that actually represent the highest you can think about. All right? Who is the creator of what we would call aliens like the greys and the others that they speak about? Is it gases that created everything? Like all of these planets and different civilizations, or is it some type of energy out there that created everything and that's who we call God? Where just another one we have to mm. dissect and break down. <laughs> so let's do it at a time. When you say who created the greys, you have to think scientists, just like how today, you know, things are being created in terms of using GMO for foods or genetically modified organisms and things like that. So the greys were created by originally, and there's different species yeah. of greys as well. Yeah. yeah so. The original ones were created by the Parnatharu because they were using them like satellites mm. to come and scout the planet to make sure that um, it, was a, it was habitable. Um, so they got abducted and then 
hybrid started being created by the draconians mm. and the reptilians and yeah. some of them started to create you know different think different versions to do different things for them um yeah, we also you have to read it. Uh, is it gases that created everything, like all of these planets and different civilizations, or is it some type of energy out there that created everything, and that's who we call God? Again, this thing about mm. everything and out there. Mm. Um, but yeah, we already answered that by saying that nine ether, ether yeah, yeah um, natural ether energy is where life is grown mm. from. But that's then different universes and then different galaxies and there are beings that exist in older galaxies and older universes than ours that have evoluted and are very intelligent supreme beings the original would be the natharu they're the ones mm. that have evolved to that level um so yes if you want to look at it like early earth was gaseous mm. this is where those gases became water the, you know, the, um, um, be, be, became, uh, oh, there's a word I'm looking the methane and all of that mm. type of the original gases, but then the nitrogen, hydrogen, all of these gases, eventually, you know, the earth cooled down and then became a ball and then the water, and then from the water, life forms evolved onto land. Mm. And that took mm. millions of years, as we already mentioned, with the dinosaurs and different evolutions that got wiped out. Um, and then different forms of man, as you know it, from the original Ogdoads, nine mm. Iliads in ancient Egypt, this is. And then, yeah, life forms just came out of those. Different extraterrestrials came and to the, onto the planet and, yeah, just created more and more different species. It's a big story, so sometimes we have to be very clear, like, what we call in everything, mm. how far back are we going and which beings are we talking about? Because life forms go back all the way to seven to six trillion years ago when we were in, <coughs> in air pockets as gases. Yeah, I think with the greys alone, it must you said there's over 70 different species yeah. of greys. More now. Yeah. yeah, they're constantly new ones. My questions are, how did the universe come to be? In other words, who was or who were the first being or beings, God or gods, in the, the universe? I think we've answered that so mm. many times. But um, again, there's so many universes. In the Holy Tablets, yeah. if you read the Holy Tablets, it tells you about the other seven universes. So um, the word uni just means one. Mm -hmm. And the way the universe, even now, like if you actually see our course, so the online course, we go in in great detail because... Um, something starts off with a dot and then it spirals outwards. That's what uni means. So it first mm. and then it spiral outwards and then it grows. And then there are explosions that form other, do you know what I mean, other entities. So what we're calling the universe goes back to an explosion that took place, one of these explosions. And so now they're using things like the hydron collider, mm. yeah, to to go back in time because they want to see when it exploded, how it started off because it was small as a little atom. So they've got the hydrogen mm. collider, you know, in, um, in Geneva where they've got, they, they basically um, send two atoms in different directions and then they come and they collide to recreate the original beginning. And so they can study it to see how the universe started from, how, where it started from. So. Um, that's just one universe, you know, but there are many universes and de depending on how far back you want to go. But the original beings are the nine ether beings known as the Parnatharu, yeah, or the Ethereans, which are pure energy beings, which we can evolve to become as well. What is a universe? Because sometimes I feel like I answer the question <laughs> and I'm asked the question. It's like I'm ahead of time. Universe means uni from one, and it's just the beginning of um, life in its smallest form, and then it grows and it spirals outwards, and then it expands and expands and expands. Triverse, yeah, it goes yeah, to... and then there are different, like mm. you say, triverse, juverse, Verse. multiverse, omniverse. Verse. Yeah, you can Google some of this stuff. What is your take on the use of DMT or marijuana? 
I feel like it helps me relax enough to open my mind. Yeah, we covered this That's in one of the videos as well, didn't we? Yeah. Um, our thing is, we know why people do it because they want a shortcut to mm. spirituality or awakening or consciousness. And because, you know, the part of your brain that deals with hallucinations and, um, you know, like that type of, um, you know, feeling that you get when you take drugs, is that the cerebellum, um, and this is where the barathry gland was mm. removed from. So, you know, people want to induce it, but really we don't promote you taking any intoxicants or substances um, and to do it naturally, because the minute you start doing it with a substance, you can become reliant on it, mm. and then you become addicted to it, and then if, if you don't have it, then you can't get mm. the same effect. So we say get it naturally. Um, there's, not, there's nothing as good as a natural high. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, was it uh, after DMT there was something on? Marijuana. Marijuana, yeah. Again, marijuana, um, marijuana. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> marijuana. Um, it, in its natural form as a herb and drinking it as a tea mm. has be many benefits. But we don't advocate smoking and you know putting tobacco and Rizla and then putting smoke into your lungs because that's not what your lungs are designed for. So again, depends on what it is and how you're <coughs> using it, if it's in its natural state and for, for what purposes. But we want you to stay alert, stay sharp, stay without being intoxicated at all times. How did a black woman come about being the first to be? Okay, so when you look at races on the planet, mm. scientifically, through history, anthropologists, any sort of teachings will now tell you that Africa or the Africans were first. Mm. So because men come from women, the woman would have been first. Mm. And it's really as simple as that. But you have to remember the evolution to becoming a humanoid goes back to the waters and goes back to beings coming from the waters mm. onto land. So you had like mermaids and Mermen. you know, yeah, <clears throat> different types of beings in the waters that evolved from the first single cell organisms to then life germinating and evolving in the waters. And there are billions and different species of life in the waters before coming onto land. You know, so yeah, that's how the woman, the black woman comes to be first, because Africa first and men come from women. Mm. What year mankind start to write and read? See, again, <laughs> when you say mankind, you're saying a kind of a man. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because you have to understand the different species and different kind of evolution. So you have supreme beings mm. at the very top who have elevated further, then you got beings, then you got human beings, then you got humans, then you got man, then you have mammals, then you have beasts, then you have <laughs> demons. So when you say mankind, you're talking about going back to the what we've explained many times about, you know, the different races on the planet, like the Neanderthal and the Cro Magnum, that's a different type of a man from what you would call the Denosovan so, and the Homo florensis, which is also separate from the Homo naledi and the Homo habilis. Like, this is the evolution of the different races. And then you go beyond that, yeah? So when we're saying mankind, you're really talking about the Adamites mm. who were created 6,000 years ago. And in terms of reading and speaking, as you said, the women in Africa spoke first, and that was 54,000 years ago. All right. I think we've covered the whole question. But that the, um, the, the, the loon um, landing, remember what they said? One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Mm. Something okay. to think about. Mm, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Which was fake anyway. It wasn't, yeah, it was, yeah. it wasn't even real. What was that, 1966? 69. 69, 1969, yeah. Because you see the movies like this, like yeah. the gravity is all <laughs> off. Because if you're really that far, you'll be bouncing. 
and then you see the stars in the background, the shadows are all wrong. People have debunked this a yeah. long time ago and they say it was the set of the movie Moonraker that was used to, to fool people um, into thinking, so they can take the taxpayers' money basically <laughs> and thinking they're funding some, you know, project to, 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 to yeah, it was not real. So what is our purpose as Earthling? So do every individual have a reason for being here? Yeah, mm. everyone has a purpose. The problem is finding out and knowing what your purpose is and why you're here. Um, but on a general sense, we're all here to evolve, to learn, to improve ourselves. Um, and some of us are here for to food. Hinder. <laughs> some of, here, some <laughs> of them are here to hinder. Some people are here to hinder. <laughs> yeah. Some are here for food. food you yeah. might just be... Uh, gonna end up as a sandwich S side dish <laughs> <laughs> i know we're joking it out but it's the reality like you never know yeah, um, <laughs> the way is to come by wool sabat yeah. i know that might sound like like everybody else mm. saying that but no this is different because this happens every twenty four thousand yeah. years where a supreme being actually reincarnates here on this planet to help those to make the dimensional shift to make that journey out of here once they've been raised, you know, in intellect mm. back to, to a supreme being. And Wu Sabat is the answer, and Wu Sabat is the way. Pataruk is the way. And we teaching you all this information so that you can make the best decisions and choice for yourself. And this is why we put it all together in a nice course that you can do in your own time, logging in at home, asking us questions, there's loads of videos, loads of articles, lots of information covering everything that you need so that you can actually, um, yeah, know why you're here and what's your purpose. That's also covered in the course. So, yeah, definitely get hold of the course. Know who's, who's on the planet. Yeah. So, yeah, until the next time, Wadu. Wadu.